The association between members of the same family in the European nobility had a direct influence on the health conditions of their descendants. It is known that members of the Habsburg family had a protruding appearance of the jaws, known as Habsburg jaw. Over the years, due to the recurring inbreeding, experts noticed some diseases that reappeared among nobles. For example, the large number of children who died among the nobility. Many were born and died just as quickly. Another factor that may have been triggered by incest and royalty was an exceedingly rare disease called porphyria. The disease manifested itself through skin problems and neurological complications. For many years, the disease served as an explanation for the mental insanity of King George III of the United Kingdom. However, sometime later, the man was said to suffer from manic depressive problems and bipolar disorder was suspected. Another condition that was dubbed a plague of incest for many years was hemophilia, a disease that causes problems with blood clotting. The disease is believed to have spread through European royalty through the fall to Queen Victoria. Hemophilia is a rare blood disorder in which people lack the clotting factor that allows blood to clot when it bleeds. It is a hereditary disease that is usually passed from mother to child. It is also a common disease in European royal families in the second half of the 19th and early 20th centuries and became known as the royal disease. Hemophilia, which manifests only in males, was first observed and scientifically described by American physician John Conrad Otto of Philadelphia. The disease was known since biblical times as a mysterious malady that causes deep bleeding even from trivial wounds. Cases have been reported of boys bleeding to death simply because they rubbed their gums with excessive force. A boy could die if he scraped his knee on the floor. Any small cut or bruise would cause serious bleeding, whether internal or external. Early death was highly likely, but even if the hemophiliac survived, he would suffer excruciating pain until the blood finally clotted and stopped bleeding. The process could take 30 minutes, or it could take hours. In a healthy man, the blood clots within 5 minutes, or in more severe cases, within 15 minutes but the bleeding was only part of the horror of hemophilia. The disease caused so many problems for the body's systems that few hemophiliacs escaped degenerative joint diseases such as arthritis or another danger, anemia, both of which opened the way to infections that already weakened patients could not always resist. It was possible to use morphine for pain relief, but the drug was addictive and virtually the only other known form of relief was a welcome faint when the pain became too severe. Until the mid 20th century, there was no scientific theory to treat hemophilia. How did hemophilia enter European royalty? When Victoria was born in 1819, there was no outward signs of hemophilia in the British royal family. Neither her mother nor father were carriers, nor did they show any outward symptoms of the disease. After a healthy childhood, the young queen married her much-loved cousin, Prince Albert, in 1840. It was not until 1853 and the birth of her eighth child, Leopold, that the first signs of the disease appeared in the royal family. It is believed that Queen Victoria was a carrier of Haemophilia B and passed the disease to three of her children. It is also likely that the disease passed from the queen to her children. Leopold was described as a delicate child who injured himself easily, especially when he was learning to walk, which caused the queen great concern. On August the 2nd, 1859, Victoria had a tense conversation with her uncle, King Leopold of Belgium, and wrote, your poor namesake is yet again struggling with a bad knee from a fall, which seems to have had no consequences. It is incredibly sad for the poor boy, for I really fear he will never be able to go on active duty. This unfortunate defect, often it cannot be overcome, and medicine appears useless. The prince continued to have accidents and was diagnosed by the queen's physician, Dr. James Clark, with the bleeding disorder hematophilia. 
Despite the diagnosis, little was known about the complexities of blood disorders in the 19th century. Early attempts at treatment included the administration of lime, bone marrow, hydrogen peroxide, and gelatin to wounds, especially during surgery. But since the defect was in the blood itself and not at the wound site, the treatments were almost always unsuccessful. The first transfusion to treat hemophilia was conducted by English surgeon Samuel Armstrong Lane, 1802 to 1892, in London in 1840. But transfusions remained extremely risky and were widely rejected by the medical establishment. The status quo of hemophilia research and treatment would not change until Argentine physician Alfredo Pavlovsky, 1907-1984, discovered the different types of hemophilia more than a century later. Due to a careful education under his mother's attentive eye and access to some of Europe's finest physicians at his court, Leopold bettered the average life expectancy of only 13 years. In 1882, he married Princess Helena, 1861 to 1922, and the couple had a daughter named Princess Alice, 1883 to 1981. She was also a carrier of the gene and passed it on to her son, Rupert. 1907 to 1928, who died in a car accident at the age of 20, and a second son, Maurice, 1910, who died as an infant. In 1884, Leopold died of a cerebral hemorrhage after a minor fall, survived by his pregnant wife. The later son, Prince Charles, was not affected by the disease. Things got worse with the Queen's grandchildren. Besides Leopold, two of the Queen's daughters, Alice and Beatrice, also had the disease. Through Queen Victoria's daughter Alice, 1843-1878, who married the future King Louis IV of Hesse in 1862, seven more children were exposed to the potentially fatal inheritance that plagued her family. Two sons were born with the disease, one died at age two, and two daughters were carriers. One of Alice's carrier daughters was Alice Victoria Helena Louise Beatrice, the future Tsarina of Russia, 1872 to 1918, who would carry the disease to the Russian court. The other daughter, Irene, would carry the disease to the German court. From Queen Victoria's daughter, Beatrice, two sons had the disease. Prince Leopold, 1889 to 1922, was born a hemophiliac and a daughter, Victoria Eugenia, who married King Alfonso XIII, 1886-1941 to 1941 of Spain, in 1906, was also a carrier. The Spanish royal couple had five children, one daughter, a carrier whose children did not inherit the disease, and seven sons. Five males, two of whom had hemophilia. Both sons with hemophilia died without offspring. Curiously, none of the daughters carry the hemophilia genes. Tests performed on the remains of the Romanov family revealed that Queen Victoria's great-grandson, Sarovich Alexei, suffered from the relatively rare hemophilia B, while his sister, Anastasia, 1901-1918, was a carrier. Alexei was perhaps the most famous use of a carrier, mainly because of the efforts his parents made to cure him. They even hired the monk Rasputin, who used different homemade methods to save the life of the heir to the Russian throne. Rasputin gained the trust of the Tsarina and began to exert great political influence in the country, which was going through the First World War. But many felt the political role that Rasputin was playing was unacceptable, and he was eventually killed in 1916. On January the 17th, 1918, after the October Revolution, the entire imperial family was killed. The lethal combination of a silent carrier and a tradition of political marriages and large royal families contributed to one of the most paramount transmissions of a genetic disease in medical history. Since Victoria's introduction of royal disease to the British court, her daughter, Alice's passing of the gene to the German court, Alice's daughter, Alex's marriage to the royal Russian family, and Victoria's granddaughter Eugenia's marriage to the Spanish royal family, four new strains of the disease spread throughout Europe. The throne's inheritance by Victoria's eldest son, Edward VII, who was unaffected, and the murder of all of Alex's sons during the Russian Revolution of 1917 to 1918 spared the British and Russian courts future generations of the disease. The last known descendant to struggle from the disease was Infant Don Gonzalo 
who died in a car accident at the age of 19. Today, no living members of the ruling dynasties display symptoms of hemophilia. Nevertheless, with the possibility of silent carriers in many of Victoria's great-granddaughters, there is still a small chance that the disease could reappear, especially in the Spanish line of Princess Beatrice. Although the disease has weakened royal lines and threatened the political stability of several prominent European houses, the attention its illustrious carriers attracted encouraged the medical community, particularly in the United Kingdom, to learn more about the roots of the disease and its spread in the royal lines of Europe. This had a significant impact on preventing royal marriages in the years following Queen Victoria's death. Hemophilia's legacy as a royal disease no longer lures the public as it once did. But, while researchers and doctors continue to work toward finding a cure, the disease quietly terrifies royal households as it manifests through mutations, thus keeping the danger alive. In modern times, there is a treatment for this disease, 